Hello everyone and welcome back to our quiz game show series. In the last episode we started working on the answering of those questions. In this episode we're going to work on showing the little icons that will pop up at the end of the question to show you what everyone picked as their response and then award the points later on. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can show this on the screen in our UI. So a lot of the hard work is done already for us as we did it in the last episode as the game state is already replicating across who has picked what is perfect that's what we want so now we just need to do visuals for this so let's go ahead and find our ui folder and i'm going to create a new widget blueprint and we will do this is the player response we'll do a very simple thing here what i'm going to do is a simple uh, border and the border is going to be actually we'll just wrap it with a size box as well there you go and let's give it uh 40 by 40 and then change it from field screen to design on screen we can see what it's going to look like i think that might be okay might be a little bit bigger but we'll, we'll try this out first um on the border i'm going to make the uh the uh draw as here as a rounded box like so and then i'm going to change outline settings over here give an outline setting of say three maybe and we make this um white and then the background color i'm going to make black for now okay so with that done what will eventually be here will be like the avatar for the player so you can know who done what um but we'll worry about that later the thing we want to do on here though is indicate the player state that's associated to this so let's go to the graph and give it a variable player state and the type for this would be the player state for the quiz show now i can't remember if i already made one i did yep player state quiz and we made that editable and exposed on spawn now the reason why i'm choosing the the specific quiz player state is conventionally that's where the avatar information can be stored so saving a step i can just set it straightly on here there we go and we can now close that so now we've got that we're going to go over to the question screen and which is this one and what we're going to do is we're going to put that graphic already on our various buttons the answers however we're not going to show them straight away we're going to give it a timer to eventually reveal but how do we actually do this well first of all we need somewhere to put the actual images so on these slots for the answers i'm going to add a new wrap box to it let's go edit the answer and in this overlay we've got over here i'm going to search for a wrap box throw that in there the wrap box here i'm going to put on the uh, bottom right of the screen here so let's go to the uh, alignment right to the bottom and i want to get a preview of what it looks like so normally when i'm doing this i'll put in preview stuff like this to help me visualize it so let's put in the wrap box the player response there we go obviously i don't want it to be way up there so i'm going to just change the rendering of my wrap box to be lower so I'm going to go down to translation in the wire and I'm going to click and drag it down or oh, up, sorry, and it'll move it down like that. Go 50. Okay, so now we've got the issue of it clipping easy enough to fix we just go to our border i think we don't on there Look. uh yep clipping change clip the bounds to be the default you know, overlay it just fine for us just totally fine for us in this case because the question we're using clipping to clip that little image we made to it but the answers don't have an image so all a-okay for this and obviously it's up to you how you show players picking options but this is just a way of doing it and because it's a wrap box we can add marbles to it and we may want to add some padding i think by the looks of it so this is why it's good to plot up uh, like 
block out and plan what your your wife's going to look like because you can get an image of like what it's going to look like at the end. So I'm going to add a padding to these things. So let's go back to the actual player response widget. And if I want to add a padding to the whole entire widget, I just click on the top of my hierarchy. You see padding over here. I'm going to give it a padding of five. Go back to the answer. Select all, all of them. And now padding here will now get, be able to reset to default. It's five. Now it may preview wires look like this, and it shouldn't do it actually in the game because the rat box can extend out. Um, but what I'm going to do with the rat box actually is just tell it to stretch out horizontally, uh, like this. Okay, but because I wanted to pad in from the right hand side here, I want to put in another rat box or another thing inside of it that help push it along. So I'm going to go to the rat box here, wrap it with a horizontal box. And going to put in a spacer before the wrap box in the horizontal box. And the spacer then can be set to fill and it'll push it right to the edge there. Okay. So let's compile and save that. Okay. That's looking pretty good. So this wrap box here needs to be editable. So let's make that variable. And we'll call it box player responses. And then I can empty the contents of it. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go back to the question screen. So each one of these now has that little hidden wrap box where we can put the player response. Let's go to the graph. And we now need to be able to communicate when the map has updated in the game state. So on the game state, I'm going to create an event dispatcher. And do on response set or answer set and rather than doing this print string i'm going to get rid of that i'm going to call on answer set and i want to give it the same stuff i was just giving the print string basically i want to give it the player state and the answer so on answer set and input be the player state And we'll name it. And then also the answer. Yeah. And I can plug in those two. So in my question screen, we now need to bind to that game state's event dispatcher. So let's go back up to, let's say, let's do it on a construct actually. We ain't made one of those yet. There's no point doing it on the pre-construct. Um, no big difference. It's a good idea to separate the pre-construct stuff from the construct stuff just for organizational sense. Um, so anything that's dependent on stuff to be running in the game, like the game state, it may be better to put on a construct um, to separate it out a bit. But not a big difference either way. Or this need anyway. So get game state. Cast to my game state quiz. And then create the binding by doing bind event to on answer set. There you go. And we're going to create an event. And we'll create a matching function, renaming it. So answer to received. Answer set. That's not right. So received, is it? There you go. Okay, so that can come across here. <clears throat> now I need to create the widget. So create widget. Create the player response. It's going to ask for the player state. Now the player state won't match up because this is the generate player state. This is the player uh, state for the quiz. So first of all, we need to cast it. Yes, quiz. So now we made it, we just don't know which answer to actually put it on. So we're gonna make a little function that's gonna be handy for us to have, which is get answer slot by index. 
And we're going to have the input for that, which would be the index for the letter index that we're using. So index. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the answer array out, do a for each loop, and say to this one, get the answer, or index, sorry, on here. And whether or not it is equal exactly to the index there. If it is, great. That means we want to return that array element. So return node, return the array element. And we'll just call this one answer slot. That's it. Now, because this is a simple function that we're just getting information, not setting information, we'll make our life a bit easier. I make it a pure one. Let's also make sure we get the most up to date information as of and when we need it. So let's go to the received answers. I'm going to get my answer slot by index. Put the answer into the index there. And now for the answer slot here, I can add this widget to that top box. So we're going to get the box for responses. Add child to wrap box. And we're going to add that asset there. Perfect. Now we want to get rid of the responses when they are uh, starting a new question. So we make another function here and we're going to do clear responses. Take our answer array. Go for each one. And for each one, we're going to get the wrap box. Whoops. Um, let's get the box play responses. And I just want to clear the children from it. And this will get called right at the start when we start answering, asking questions. So on the pre-construct over here, um, we're going to just put it on at start here. We'll just do it uh, here, clear responses. Okay. okay. So at the moment, they're not going to be hidden. We just want to see these things pop up. So let's go ahead and test that out. So, who built ancient civilization built the pyramids at Giza? I'll say Egyptians, and there's my response there. And I should see it on my side here, over here too. And if I pick a different one, let's say the Romans, we'll see it update over here too. Okay. And you'll see that I can't click on any more on my side because we've changed that visibility, remember, to non-hit te non testable, um, meaning that I can't click on it. Okay. So there's our responses. Perfect. There you go, looking pretty good so far. So in the next episode, we're going to work on the timer for the question, which will then, after that timer has expired, reveal the responses the players have given and reward the points appropriately. If you want to watch that next episode right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donation will get you access to all of our videos early before anyone else. And I want to say a massive thank you to everyone over there already supporting the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.